During the making of this video, the operators of various mines have allowed the staging or the recreation of certain conditions which may at first appear to be unsafe and not according to certain federal, state, and or company safety procedures. These scenes were created strictly to demonstrate the differences between correct and incorrect safety and work procedures in the mining environment. At times, incorrect procedures may have been intentionally left in the video sequences to allow mine safety instructors to ask, what's wrong with this picture? The conditions in stage scenes are in no way a true reflection of the condition or the operation of the mine shown in this video production. Finally, this video must be augmented by new MSHA rules and regulations that may be implemented at any time in addition to changes in your company's safety rules and regulations that may be put into practice. This video training program does not purport to cover all federal, state, and or your company's safety rules and regulations on the topics covered. For answers to any questions that you may have, consult with your supervisor or your company safety manager at once. Welcome to the latest in our series of mine safety training videos. Today we will be discussing maintenance turnaround safety. We will introduce a new safety vocabulary word, conspicuity, the art of seeing and being seen. A safety professional and personal friend of mine was run over at night by an off-road forklift. The hazards associated with turnarounds are many and varied. In addition to your own workers, there will be workers from a few to several dozen On the night of a companies. maintenance turnaround, each of which has its own safety and health rules, which may or may not be in sync with yours. Also, with these companies come all types and sizes of equipment moving around like fire ants on the disturbed mound. Pedestrian safety and conspicuity become a top priority. Conspicuity of the art of see and being seen, being conspicuous. How, you might ask? Brightly colored clothing and vests, reflective tape and stickers, strobe lights on vehicles, or just a sampling of ways to make yourself more visible. Congestion. Barricaded and taped areas. Scaffolding. Permit required confined spaces. Night work. Housekeeping. And all-terrain forklift and mobile equipment. They all go with maintenance turnaround projects. In this environment, you can't afford to let your guard down for even a second. You've got to be aware of potential hazards and practice safe work methods every minute of every day. Okay, you're probably thinking we hear about safety every day. Let's get down to where the rubber meets the road. What specific safety practices and work methods do you want us to focus on? Well, that's a fair question, so let's start answering it right away. You've pre-shifted your machine, but how are you feeling? Have you performed a personal, physical pre-shift? Right now, before you even start your shift, ask yourself, are you truly ready for work? Are you taking any new medications, or have you accidentally taken two medications that may interact, causing dizziness, drowsiness, or nausea? Are you experiencing a muscle strain or pull? Perhaps even a broken bone from an off-site non-work-related injury? How about extraordinary mental or emotional stress? Have you just experienced a death in the family or with friends? Are you going through a divorce? Are you experiencing extraordinary financial stress? All of these situations can hinder your ability to focus on your job. They can be distractions that slow your ability to think and react. If any of these conditions are truly adversely affecting your ability to work and perform your job safely, tell your supervisor immediately. You and he can assess the situation and make the decision on whether you should be performing your normal duties for that day. On a major maintenance turnaround, you could easily call the job site Congestion City. 
just look at this place. You've got multiple companies or contractors with what could be hundreds of workers on the same work site. Iron workers, pipe fitters, welders, masons, carpenters, and mobile equipment operators all performing different tasks. Materials that will be lifted overhead are being secured by skilled and sometimes unskilled workers with cables and hooks. Different types of cranes are then lifting and transporting those loads overhead to their destination. Be aware of the swing radius as cranes rotate and the pathways of overhead loads. Man lifts are being used to lift workers to different heights. In some cases, workers are lifted just a few feet like this person tightening bolts. In other areas, man lifts may be lifting personnel several stories up, such as these men securing concrete panels. Watch for man lifts moving forward and backward as well as rotating in a circular pattern. Mobile equipment such as all-terrain forklifts, smaller four-wheel vehicles, front-end loaders, and other vehicles are constantly moving about. Mobile equipment operators, look out for pedestrians and workers on foot. Is your backup alarm audible above the surrounding noise? Do you need a spotter? Pedestrians, use specified walkways such as this one when present. If there is no designated walkway in the area you're traveling on foot in, then keep your eyes on the unpredictable movement of different pieces of mobile equipment. Practice seeing the potential hazards around you and being seen by equipment operators and other workers. Barricaded and taped areas will be all around you. These areas either prevent you from being in them altogether or they alert you to moving about with great caution. Barricaded and taped areas mean either proceed with caution or danger do not enter. The first thing to remember is that when you see an area marked with red tape, this means do not enter the area. The temptation may be to take a shortcut, but this may be a fatal choice or one that results in a serious injury. There are numerous reasons for taping and barricading. There could be cranes operating with overhead loads passing directly over the area. Overhead welding and hot work may be in progress, producing sparks and falling debris. Keep all combustibles in appropriate containers and cover them with fire blankets of non-combustible material if they are within a 25-foot radius of hot work. Airlines and gas lines could be running through the area to be used for welding or hot work. These represent entanglement and tripping hazards. Industrial gas cylinders may be stored on pallets, obstructing walkways. There may be mobile equipment such as bulldozers and track hose moving soil for subgrade preparation for foundations of new structures. Workers may be erecting scaffolding and using bolts and clamps that if dropped below could cause you personal injury. There are literally dozens of reasons for barricaded and taped areas at the site. The bottom line is this. Areas with red tape mean do not enter. And those with yellow tape mean proceed with caution. Before entering this confined space, have you got your permit? Have you done a walk down with all your team members? You may have to work within permit confined spaces such as this raw mill during a maintenance turnaround. Very specific procedures apply. If any part of your body breaks the plane of a confined space, you have entered the space. An authorized and trained supervisor must be in charge of the operation. 
The supervisor and all team members will review all steps of the work procedures as specified by the permit and a job hazard analysis. Beware, there is a temptation to rush the permit in the job hazard review. Be thorough and answer any and all questions now. Upon completion of the review, the supervisor and all team members will sign and post the permit adjacent to the raw mill entry point. The next step will be for all workers to go to all primary and secondary power sources and to lock out and tag out those sources. They should then test those power sources to be non-operational. Upon returning to the entry site, now is the time to review PPE requirements. Beyond hard hats, eye protection, hearing protection and gloves, will respirators, fall protection and any other special PPE or any other special equipment such as exhaust fans, blowers, or explosive proof lighting be needed. After verifying that all PPE and special equipment is there, test atmospheric conditions for the area if required and post those results. Now, the team may enter the confined space and in this case inspect the panels for excess wear inside the raw mill. The procedure will be time consuming because all of the panels must be individually inspected. Upon completion of the procedure, all workers will vacate the inside of the raw mill. Entryway covers will be replaced. Everyone will resign the permit. The lockout and tagout will be reversed and power restored to the equipment. Follow all permit required confined space procedures and take no shortcuts. And you thought you had built the world's tallest set of scaffolding? Think again. Whether halfway to the sky or just a few feet in the air, scaffolding is often needed during maintenance turnaround work. Scaffolding should be erected only by trained and qualified workers and areas under scaffolding should be taped and or barricaded. Proper fall protection should be worn and proper tie-off should be used with that fall protection equipment. Before every single shift, scaffolding should be inspected by competent persons. An inspection tag should be attached to the scaffolding and persons inspecting the scaffolding should sign the tag upon the completion of the inspection. At any time, if there is a reasonable doubt about the structural integrity or the safety of scaffolding, it should be re-inspected immediately. When setting up scaffolding, it should be kept away from power lines and power sources. Scaffolding should be a minimum distance of 10 feet away from the lines when the power is up to 50 kV. Anything over 50 kV requires prior approval. Workers on scaffolding should always wear fall protection and tie off properly. Furthermore, they should be watching for the pathway of overhead suspended loads. All mobile equipment should stay proper distances away from scaffolding. All workers below scaffolding should do the same and they should watch out for hot work, welding, sandblasting, painting, and other tasks which could be a danger to the persons below. Sometimes maintenance projects by necessity must be performed in less than ideal lighting conditions. Then you need to bring in portable lighting such as this. Here it is at dark. The mine looks a bit more tranquil, peaceful, and the temperature has finally cooled off. However, night work in the mine requires even greater caution. First, there is the visibility factor for you. We can call it the C or the B seen factor. Wear PPE that is bright and reflective. These miners all have reflective vests on. You might also wear shirts and hard hats that have reflective tape on them. Second, 
there are bright lights and what might be called light blindness. From a distance, lighting might not affect your vision. Get closer into the white hot spotlight of glaring light and you might be temporarily blinded by that light. Depth perception can be affected by lighting and intermediate shadows. These miners are changing out a crusher lining. Because of the shadows and the depth perception, they're allowing additional space between each other to keep from hitting each other with heavy hammers or injuring each other with power tools required to loosen those large bolts. You certainly want to make sure there is adequate lighting for night work. This water could be a potential hazard if not properly lit at the base of the crusher platform. These stairs and handrails would be hard to navigate properly without adequate lighting. Airlines, pieces of metal, and other objects could be tripping hazards if not adequately lit. And finally, you want to make sure that all of your safety signage is properly lit and still very clearly visible at night. Safety signage that can't be seen is not going to be effective. Make sure the signage is visible to all miners, even at night. Here are some excellent examples of proper housekeeping during turnarounds and at all other times as well. Remember, your mama don't work here and cleanliness is next to godliness. Tool storage boxes are in order and being used regularly on this job site. Fall protection, come-alongs, tools and other materials are being kept in these boxes. All lubricants, solvents and other flammables are stored in flammable materials storage units. Airlines, gas lines, and welding apparatus are organized and are staged in the correct areas. Workers have even established a laydown yard for both tools and material storage until they are needed. A lot of thought and planning have gone into making this a safe storage area that will keep these materials from cluttering walkways and restricting adequate workspace. What you don't want to see are shovels and air hoses laying in a walkway. You don't want to leave piles of bolts to become tripping and falling hazards. You shouldn't leave ropes and lanyards all over to entangle the feet of workers going to and from the work area. You don't want to leave discarded paint buckets on pallets and passageways. Keep it clean. Keep it organized. Keep it safe. All-terrain forklifts such as this and are very useful pieces of equipment, but as I said earlier, I lost a very good friend and safety professional a few months ago when he was struck and killed by one of these machines. Forklifts, front-end loaders, and other equipment not normally used on the site create many additional and unique hazards. Always perform a pre-shift inspection on all mobile equipment. Backup alarms, running lights, and strobes must be inspected. Pedestrians, watch out for front-end loaders, trucks, four-wheelers or mules, and all-terrain forklifts. They are moving about and may change direction in a split second. Again, walk only in designated walkways. Operators, think for yourself and expect the unexpected from pedestrians. They may step out in front of you without warning. Often, they just don't think about the load weight and required stopping distance for you. Operators, always, repeat, always have the proper visibility when going forwards or backwards. If your visibility is restricted, then use a spotter or a flagman. Travel the proper speed for existing conditions. You may have to slow down due to congestion. Keep your load as low to the ground as you can and create the best possible visibility by doing so. Depending on the weight, the size, and the shape of the load, adjust your speed accordingly. Know what your operating or your swing radius is from side to side or up and down. Operate within this space. Be aware of the whereabouts of other mobile equipment around you. Trucks, 
front end loaders, cranes, man lifts may all be in the area and pose collision hazards. As you can see as a worker on maintenance turnaround sites, there are many potential hazards and certainly very specific safe work practices. We encourage you to take safety seriously every minute of every day. We hope you've increased your safety knowledge as a result of viewing this, another in our series of exciting mine safety training videos. Until we meet again, and we will meet again, work safe. Get her done.